In this lecture, I am going to discuss about the block diagram representation for LTI discrete time system or we can say realization of this discrete time systems. That is, the LTI system is we have to realize the system function that is in discrete means we have to use the Z transform. So we have to realize the H of Z using this block diagram representations. Now, so we are having uh, different types that is direct form 1, direct form 2, cascade form and parallel form. So in, the, in our gate syllabus, we are having the these two. This is for gate syllabus that is cascade form and parallel form. But to analyze the cascade form and the parallel form, first we should know direct form 1 and direct form 2. And uh, as far as the gate record, so we got only 2-3 times from these uh, realizations. But anyway, we should uh, learn this topic. It's very easy topic, right? So I will complete in this lecture only. Now, to realize these uh, different types of forms, first we should know three basic operations. So three basic operations. When we want to realize the block diagrams, right? three basic operations so the first one is simple is addition or we need an adder function so adder is like this so we can use this plus uh, symbol or sigma symbol also or sigma something like this so if i want to add two signals that is discrete time signals x1 of n and the plus x2 of n we can have the y of n is res resultant is x1 of n plus x2 of n right so this is x1 of n so if i adding with without any sign so it will become plus suppose if i add a minus here simple so this y1 y of n will become now x1 of n minus x2 of n right so this is the first operation that is added the second one is multiplier suppose if i want to multiply with some uh, coefficient so how to do that simple that is if some x of n is there and without any uh, a symbol or anything suppose there is a constant if I add here a so this y of n will become simply a into x of n so this a can be positive negative etc so this is the multiplier in our block diagram representation right so there is a straight line with a uh, arrow with a constant a the third one is unit delay element unit delay element so what is this unit delay element means it will add some delay to the the input signal suppose x of n is like this if i add some delay element with the z inverse so z inverse means what is the output we will get is simply is x of n minus 1 we know that whenever there is a x of n and what is the z transform is x of z so if x of n minus 1 there is a time shifted in the time domains so in the z uh, z, tra z transform it will be z inverse into x of z so what is the opposite means so it will add one unit delay so that is like this so if i take some example like this x of n plus 2 right if i add one unit delay so it will become y of n is equal to so it will suppress this 2 minus 1 so it will become x of n plus 1 now after this if i add one more delay so it will become x of n etc so these three operations we need add a multiplier and unit delay element now we'll see the first one that is direct form one realization so uh, i mean we can realize from this transfer function or difference equation they will give either difference equation or directly they will give transfer function so so if they give uh, the difference equation we can find the transfer function right so difference equation in the form of like this suppose this is y of n plus a1 into y of n minus 1 plus a2 into y of n minus 2 is equal to x of n plus uh, b1 x of n minus 1 plus b2 x of n minus 2 and so on. Suppose this is b0 is given. Right? So they will give their either difference equation or directly the transfer function or system function. So from this we have to realize the uh, this uh, h of z or we can say the block diagram. So for this either transfer function or for this difference equation we need to draw the block diagram now the direct form one realization is so the numerator terms are generally called as zeros the denominator terms are generally called as poles right one so first step is first step is 
so we need to realize the realize the zeros first right then the second step is realize the poles so first we need to realize the zeros then we need to realize the poles so we will realize the zeros first now to realize the zeros what we need to do is we have to cross multiply this that is see y of z will become so y of z plus a1 into z inverse y of z plus a2 into z inverse to y of z and so on this is also b0 into x of z b1 into z inverse into x of z etc so i am directly writing like this y of z plus a1 into z inverse y of z plus a2 z inverse to y of z is equal to b0 into x of z plus b1 z inverse into x of z plus b2 z inverse 2 into x of z now to realize zeros so first we need to assume this total term has some different function w of z so what is w of z here is v0 into x of z plus b1 z inverse into x of z plus b2 z inverse 2 into x of z now to realize so what is the input always x of z now w of z is summation of these three terms so that means we need to add these three terms so see one straight line because this is the constant multiplication so this is simply b naught the forward path see whenever we are realizing the zeros we will get always forward path something like this. the arrow is indicating towards right side from left to right now we need to add some some adder here and this will become w of z and it is also adding with some unit delay so always in forward paths or when we are realizing we have to place a unit delay element here that is z inverse and what is the multiplication factor here is the b1 so that is b1 and we need to add here one more uh, adder why because we need one more delay element so when we want to read a z inverse 2 so this z inverse goes to one more unit delay element this is z inverse so z inverse into z inverse z inverse 2 so what is the constant here is b2 b2 and it is going to the adder so this is the realization of zeros so so what we need to remember when we are realizing zeros we will get the forward paths and the coefficients in this so multiplier will be in the what you call in the middle and the unit delay elements will be in the left side next step two we need to realize the poles right step to realizing the poles so the equation this equation now will become y of z always remember when we are realizing the poles we need to write the expression in terms of y of z so we already assumed this is total is w of z so this will become y of z is equal to w of z minus a1 into z inverse y of z plus minus a2 into z inverse 2 into y of z now we already know w of z so y of z is equal to in terms of w of z we will get but these are the some portion of the output so we have to uh, you know represent in feedback form right so that's why we need to add plus here and it is going directly y of z because what is the const constant here or coefficient simply one now this is the one now this is z inverse right so this y of z is going back to the one delay element that is z inverse we will get here and what is the coefficient minus a1 now see when we are realizing the poles the arrow will be indicating from right to left so minus a1 so what is the coefficient value minus so minus a1 and we will add one more adder here because we need one more delay element this is arrow here then next one is z inverse 2 so one unit delay we need to add one more so z inverse and what is the coefficient value minus a2 this is the one so this is the realization of poles now now what we need to do we need to combine these two either first poles and zeros so combining combining the realizations of realizations of step one and step two right one and two i am writing like two. so first zeros so zeros means we will add summation here so this is i can write simply x of n or x of z also then here we will get z inverse the unit element here we will get p naught here b1 here we will get one added adder similarly 
z inverse one more uh, coefficient is b to this one the second one is summation will be this is w of z intermediate and this is plus here so this is y of z right so actually this is there is no coefficient so directly one means so we cannot uh, i mean we can represent like one or without that also it is okay then we need to add z inverse in the feedback part with a coefficient minus seven with a adder similarly one more this is minus a2 here z inverse right so this is the realization of zeros and this is the realization of poles right so what is the what is happening here is when we are realizing the zeros so the forward paths as well as the coefficient c whatever the uh, coefficient uh, sign that is plus means we will get plus only suppose if there is a minus we will get minus but in case of uh, when we are realizing the poles see whenever there is a plus we will get opposite sign here see here plus a2 we are getting minus a2 so that we need to remember once we remember these points so we can easily draw the realizations by just seeing the transfer function we can easily draw the realization that means whenever we are realizing the zeros the coefficients what are the coefficient signs same as it is will be there but when we are realizing the poles the signs will be opposite right so that is about this one so i will take some example now we will see this example to realize the direct form one so these are the zeros and these are the poles now how to realize so when first we will realize the zeros so realization is only one delay element is sufficient so i will write here x of n what is the coefficient so simply one so it is going like this this is plus this is w of z so one means one only so we can write one or simply we can uh, leave it like that then one delay element is enough so z inverse what is the coefficient positive means we'll get positive only so this is one delay element request so no addition uh, no adder is required now 1 plus z inverse is over now when we realize the zeros i mean poles we'll get plus here see 1 is 1 so directly y of z now whenever this is a minus so with the one unit delay element right so what is the coefficient we'll get minus means we'll get positive and here we need one adder because there is one more delay element that is z inverse 2 we need to realize so to realize z inverse 2 this is z inverse so z inverse into z inverse z inverse 2 what is the coefficient here positive that means we'll get negative here so one means we'll get minus one right so this is the realization of this one so very simple so when we realize the zeros first we'll realize the zeros whatever the coefficients value positive means positive negative means negative when we realize the poles so one means directly without any delay i mean the coefficient is one value or without uh, one also it will be represented as one now whenever there is a minus we'll get positive whenever it's plus we'll get negative suppose if we add one more that is z inverse three so here we'll get one this is one more plus and one more delay element we'll get and so on right so this is our the direct form one using the transfer function now when they when they give different equation how to realize using direct form one now we can uh, realize from the directly from the difference equation or we can convert into the uh, what you call z transform and uh, find the h of z so if i find h of z from the direct uh, directly difference equation suppose they will give the difference equation and we can realize from this difference equation also so there is two different procedures first we will find the h of z that is y of z by x of z y of z by x of z or we can directly realize from this difference equations that comes from the practice first we will go, go with the standard procedure y of z by x of z so what is this we will get 1 plus 2 z inverse the coefficients of x of n by coefficients of this y of n that is 1 minus 1 by 6 z inverse plus 1 by 8 z inverse 2 because x of z plus 2 into z inverse x of z y of z minus 1 by 6 into z inverse y of z and so on right so once we know these are the zeros and these are the poles now we can easily realize so first zeros so when we realize the zeros summation will come here and this is x of n so only one is there so this is one and the one in unit delay element which is having like this this is z inverse and the coefficient is directly 2 over 
Now when we realize the poles, summation will come here. And this is y of n. Now this is anyway 1. So no problem. So when it is going back, so with a 1 unit delay. Now this is minus 1 by 6. 1 minus 1 by 6. So 1 by 6 means the positive mean, I mean negative means will get positive. So this is simply 1 by 6 with the delay I mean error. Then one more adder, I mean delay required that is z inverse here and what is the coefficient this is 1 by 8 positive. So what do we get minus 1 by 8. This is adding here. Right. This is the one. Now but we can directly uh, realize from this expression. Right. So we know that the whenever we are realizing the, uh, what you call zeros this will be from the unit I mean uh, inputs. Right. So the input uh, what you call one unit delay with a uh, multiplier is 2 this is 1 only so directly we can realize like this positive 1 and see coefficient with a delay coefficient with 1 unit delay so z inverse into 2 power now when we want to realize the poles see whatever the y of n means y of n that is a 1 uh, multiplier is 1 so this is minus 7 by 6 so if this is going that side so it will become 1 by 6 so the delay element here the delay element comes with the minus 1 by 6 so what is the opposite so positive that is 1 by 6 and one adder will be there and so on see the second one is also opposite see 1 by 8 so if it is going that side minus 1 by 8 that's it over right so from the from this difference equation we can directly draw the block diagram so the forward paths will become the due to x of n and the reverse path or a feedback path will give the from the y of n and when we are going the with the feedback whatever the sign here minus 1 by 6 we have to use opposite sign so minus means plus here also plus means minus so same we will get right so this is about the direct form 1 now we will see direct form 2 so if i take the generalized expression of this uh, transfer function h of z so like this in direct form 2 the step one is we need to realize the poles the step two is we need to realize the zeros so very simple as the in direct form one so i will not go in details so i will directly draw the realization so realize the poles means so when we realize the poles summation will come the first that is x of n this is summation see now one means so directly without any delay directly we can add simply one now whenever we are adding poles so we should get feedback paths so with the delay elements z inverse and what is the coefficients this is a positive what is the coefficient will get opposite minus a1 with a adder here like this now one more uh, z inverse 2 is there one more delay element which is z inverse then what is the coefficient this is positive so we'll get minus a2 is going to the adder over now when we realize the zeros so where we need to add the summation at the end so this is end then we will have y of n here so this is directly going to the y of n then what is the other feedback path c b naught so what is the coefficient here we will get b naught right this is if i assume some w of n an intermediate one then then some one unit delay with the coefficient b1 so delay will come here z inverse and coefficient is b1 so forward path add adder then one more delay for z inverse 2 so z inverse, z inverse into z inverse, z inverse 2. What is the coefficient? B2. This is the uh, what you call zeros. This is the zeros realization and this is the poles realization. Just what we need to do is uh, when you compare with the direct form 1. So we have to interchange. So this will come here and this will come here. That's it. Now see this is z inverse, z inverse. So we can combine these two with a single z inverse. See. So how to do that? So it will become like this. So in middle we get one z inverse and here one more z inverse and feedback paths. This is minus a1 and this is minus a2. Here we'll get adder. Here we'll get one more adder. So this is x of n. Now here, so here we'll get one more adder. So with coefficients, this is b naught and this is b1 and this is b2. Here we will get one more adder and so on. This is the y of n. See, the direct form generally we use in a everywhere. 
so direct form two means so single delay element so it's not only you see here if you see here we'll get four delays elements right one two three and four but instead of this four if there are two delays elements we can easily solve or realize this block diagram in direct form two right so see when we this is the poles right so one plus a1 into z inverse plus a2 into z inverse 2 and you're going like this b naught plus b1 into z inverse then b2 into z inverse into z inverse b into b2 into z inverse 2 over right so this is the direct form 2 you see this example so same example for what we taken from direct form 1 now to realize this one so first we will realize the poles then this is the first step then we have to realize the zeros next right so when we realize the force, so we'll get first adder that is x of n and so this is anyway one so with i mean the arrow is not required so directly we'll take feedback so with the z inverse and what is the coefficient this is a minus so what we'll get plus and there is an adder right then z inverse 2 is there so we need one more delay element z inverse coefficient plus means we'll get minus over now when we realize the zeros so this is only one unit element is sufficient so first one is going going like this for one then one delay element is sufficient so if i add here see z inverse and if i take one uh, path here so what is the coefficient whatever the coefficient that will become here one and it will be here this is y of one so this is the direct form two approach because we don't require z inverse two so that's why there is no path here right so this is about this direct form one suppose if they give some difference equation how to do it suppose y of n plus 2 into y of n minus 1 is equal to x of n plus 1 by 3 into x of n minus 1 now from this direct uh, from this difference equation we can draw the directly now if you see this is the it will give zeros and it will give poles right now first we have to realize the poles now only one unit element is sufficient so this is positive this is x of n see here so this is directly 1 plus 1 by 3 so but anyway we need to require the zero i mean sorry poles so poles means if it is going that side so y of n this will become the going that side means minus 2 so what are the plus 2 means we'll get with the z inverse so plus 2 means what is the coefficient we'll get minus 2 and here we don't require error because one unit delay is sufficient next to the y of n we'll add one more summation this is y of n so y of n so what is this the zeros so anyway one is going like this so 1 by 3 into z inverse so z inverse is already there so we'll add one coefficient which is positive means positive only that's it over right as simple as that now even though if we convert it into the h of z this expression so the zeros will come 1 plus 1 by 3 z inverse by this is what is this 1 plus 2 into z inverse see here only one delay is sufficient so intermediate one delay 1 plus 1 by 3 so this is 1 this is plus 1 by 3 so in the, when we realize the poles this is 1 plus so 1 plus is there like this then whatever the plus so we'll get minus 2 here that's it right from this directly from the difference equation also we can draw the realization or if you are uh, confusion draw the or uh, find the h of z then first realize the poles then zeros over right now we'll see the cascade form realization so in the cascade form what we need to do is so for the given h of z that is the transfer function so we need to take some product of the different functions right so we have to make like that so products so it may be two products or it may be three products etc now each product we need to realize using direct form 2 that's it so as simple as that so if i take some example so i'll do directly example suppose h of z is equal to 1 plus z inverse by 1 minus z inverse suppose this is simple so if i take like this so how to represent in two system functions so i make it i can make first one is 1 plus z inverse into 1 by 1 minus z inverse or or we can make 1 by 1 minus z inverse first into 1 plus z inverse next so anyway we can get this same answer so this is i will assume x1 object this is h2 object so first we will realize h1 object so what is h1 object is equal to simply 1 plus z inverse 
right now how to realize this one using direct form 2 so when we use direct form 2 so what is this so simply we will get one uh, adder here and one delay element z inverse what are the coefficient positive means positive only one over so this is h1 of z this is x of n or x of z also next we will realize h2 of z so what is h2 of z it is 1 by 1 minus z inverse so it is only it is having poles so how to represent so first you will get adder then we will get inverse here the delay element will come here and this is a minus what is the coefficient will get one so this is the one so this is x of n and this is y what is y n of n this is some x2 of n and this is the overall y of n now if we multiply the cascading means we need to add this like this that's it y of 1 of n is nothing but equal to y x2 of n so this is h1 object this is h2 object just cascading see the output of this one is goes to the input of the this add that's it even if we first realize this one so this will come here this will come here as simple as that right now we'll take one more example using the cascade form now what we need to do so what we do is we will assume some x1 h1 object this one and this is h2 object we can assume different different also 1 plus 2 z inverse by 1 minus 1 by 2 z inverse 1 function etc etc right so whatever convenient for you you can you you can uh, represent like that now what is h1 of z so h1 of z is equal to 1 plus z inverse by 1 minus 1 by 2 z inverse so so in using direct form 2 so direct form 2 means first poles so first we will get adder here then one unit delay element is sufficient so pole means so this is minus so we will get positive over then zero so this is one only so we will get what is the coefficient one so we'll get same as like that. This is H1 of Z over. Next, H2 of Z. H2 of Z is equal to what? 1 plus 2 into Z inverse by 1 plus 1 by 4 Z inverse. So how do you realize? Again, same. One delay element will get Z inverse. So here, adder. And what is the coefficient? So 1 plus 1 by 4. So we'll get minus 1 by 4. Positive means negative. Right? Here, one more adder. So what is this? z inverse i mean the zeros when you are adding so what is the coefficient two same positive option right now so this is x of n and this is y of n what we need to do just add this one right so in cascade connection over right this is about this one using cascade functions so this is the cascade form of realization that's it right will see the last uh, realization that is parallel form so in this parallel form what we need to do is so we need to express this h of z in partial fraction right so once we express this in partial fraction suppose the h of z is equal to suppose like this in the form c plus some c1 by 1 minus p1 into z inverse plus c2 by 1 minus p2 into z inverse and so on right so we'll get partial fractions then what is the this generalized block diagram for this one is the so constant means so it will get c then one by one we need to so this is x of n then here we will realize the second one that is here you think the poles right only poles means the feedback factor with the delay element z inverse so this is minus p1 so we'll get p1 here right into the coefficient c1 either we can add here or here so our wish so if i add here simply c1 into 1 by 1 minus p1 into z inverse right and we need to add one summation here this is y of n suppose this is one coefficient one pole if it is okay then fine otherwise suppose one more pole is there c2 into same plus this is z inverse and this is p2 1 minus p2 so we need to add to here right next suppose up to some summation is there then up to cn suppose this is some cn this is p pn this is z inverse right so if i add here so this is like this so so many so how many poles or how many fractions will get that many number of paths will get so first one second third fourth and so on so how many poles those many parallel combinations will get 
right so 1 2 so 1 and 2 this is a condition if you are not, no constant so it will be just open that's it right now we will do one example then it will be clear now you will see this one so how to make this partial fraction is see the numerator and denominator polynomials are same so but the trans, uh, rational transfer function means the numerator polynomial degree should be less than the denominator so what we need to do we need to divide with this one so what we do is we'll divide with minus z inverse plus one with the z inverse plus one so we need to cancel this z inverse so what we do is minus one so minus minus plus this is z inverse this is minus one so if we subtract what you will get this will be cancelled this is true now what it will become now h of z will become so this is minus one plus two by one minus z inverse now see if we cross multiply we will get the same function that is see minus 1 into 1 minus 1 minus 1 into minus z plus z inverse plus 2 so 2 minus 1 1 plus z inverse by 1 minus z inverse now to realize this one so it's very easy now the constant is minus 1 so this will become minus 1 this is x of n and the parallel combination but we need to again using direct form 2 only so constant is 2 so this is 2 I will add plus here and with uh, the z inverse one unit delay, delay element with this is minus so coefficient will get positive that is one that's it these two will be added to one summation and we will get y of n that's it right now we'll see this example so again to make partial fractions so the numerator and denominator should be uh, these two are equal but to make this uh, denominator greater what we need to do we need to divide with this one so minus 1 by 8 z inverse 2 minus 1 by 4 z inverse plus 1 and 2 z inverse 2 plus 3 z inverse plus 1 right so to cancel 2 z inverse what we need to so this is minus so we should get minus so 8 is, is there so if i add 16 8 to 16 so minus minus plus so z inverse so we'll get what 2 into z inverse 2 minus 1 by 4 minus so plus 4 4 so 4 into z inverse minus 16 so what we need to do we need to subtract this one this one we added these two will be cancelled 3 minus 4 minus z inverse this will become plus 17 now it is only z inverse now how to write this y of z is equal to minus 16 plus 17 minus z inverse by this total term 1 minus 1 by 4 z inverse minus 1 by 8 z inverse 2 now see the numerator is minus z inverse this is z inverse 2 now we can make partial fractions right now we can make the this term as partial fractions right so how this is minus 16 so before that we need to uh, find the factors for this one so i will write 17 minus z inverse by now see how to see this if i multiply i should get 1 by 8 z inverse 2 if i add minus 1 by 4 so 1 by 2 into 1 by 8 so we'll get 1 by 8 so this will become like this 1 minus 1 by 2 into z inverse into 1 plus 1 by 4 z inverse 2 see 1 into 1 1 minus 1 by 2 z inverse plus so this is minus 1 okay minus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 4 z inverse minus 1 by 2 minus minus 0 0.5 plus 0 0.25 so we'll get minus 0.25 minus 1 by 2 into 1 by 4 so we'll get minus 1 by 8 z inverse into z inverse z inverse 2 now what we need to do minus 16 plus a by 1 minus 1 by 2 z inverse right plus b by 1 plus 1 by 4 z inverse this is y of z now how to find a and b we know that this is a procedure i'll write here a at z inverse is equal to 2 so 17 minus 2 by z inverse is equal to sorry z inverse is equal to 2 17 minus 2 by 1 plus 1 by 4 into 2 so in this we need to see 17 minus 2 by this will not come 1 plus 1 by 4 into 2 so this is 2 2 times 17 minus 2 15 by 1 plus 1 by 2 this will become 3 by 2 this is 3 5 so what is this 10 so a is equal to 10 next to find b we need to find b at the z inverse is equal to minus 4 so this is 17 minus of minus 4 by 1 minus 1 by 2 into minus 4 so 
minus minus plus so 2 2 so this is 21 by 3 so 7 so b is equal to 7 a is equal to 10 right now how do you write this one now it's simple y of z is equal to minus 16 plus 10 by 1 minus 1 by 2 z inverse plus 7 by 1 plus 1 by 4 z inverse now it is looking like the generalized form right now what how to do so this is a constant simply minus 16 now one more path with a constant 10 and realization with a direct form 2 or simply it is a pole using direct form 1 or 2 because it is a pole what we need to do feedback path with the coefficient minus 1 by 2 we will get 1 by 2 with the z inverse next one more path what is the coefficient 7 we can add here or here also no problem plus and this is z inverse now what is the coefficient this is plus 1 by 4 so we will get minus 1 by 4 so we need to add these three terms so single adder we can add something like this so here we will get y of n and this is x of n right remember this x of n can be uh, make like this also right same uh, no, direction so either here x of n or we can make one more adder here so you can take y of n here also no problem right so this is the parallel form realization. Now I will solve the previous gate problems based on the uh, realizations, block diagram realizations. Now this question came in gate 1988, right? Consider the system shown in figure below. The transfer function y of z by x of z of the system is. Now it's very simple one. Now just uh, go with this uh, you no know, path. See if it's this, if you go like this, so it is a forward path. Now if you see this one z inverse and this one this is also forward path and this one is only feedback path. Now whenever there is a forward path so that will become zeros and whenever there is a fee, uh, feedback or reverse path that will become poles. So the variable is it's not n it is k right still it is a discrete time system. So y of z by x of z. Now if you, you know separate this and this so this will become poles and it will become zeros right so zeros means so sing, there is no no constant so this will become one plus so z inverse this is the a simply a into z inverse by pole pole is simply one see this is a minus b so what we will get plus b into only one into d, b into z inverse that's it right now we'll solve this question so this question came in gate 2011 now the x of n is and y of n is given but inter between two cascaded system the transfer functions h1 of z h2 of z h1 of z is given like this 1 minus 0 0.4 into z inverse by 1 minus 0 0.6 z inverse so what is saying is the overall output y of n is the same as the input x of n with one unit delay that means y of n is equal to should be x of n minus 1 so then to get that one what is the transfer function of the second system h2 of z now see to make see z inverse means what is this so it should be x of n into one unit delay means z inverse into i mean equal to y of n which is x of n minus one now to make like that what we need to do is see i need z inverse first that is okay now to cancel out this one so what we do is one minus 0.6 z inverse by one minus 0 0.4 z inverse so whenever there is two cascaded the transfer function will be multiply multiplied right so this this one this one will be cancelled this one and this one will be cancelled so the overall h of z will become only z inverse so now the h2 of z will be z inverse into 1 minus 0 0.6 z inverse by 1 minus 0 0.4 z inverse then only this two will be cancelled and we will get the overall h of z is equal to simply z inverse right so this is about this one. We will solve this question. So this question came in gate 2015 for two marks. So this is the realization or block diagram is given. Now the poles of the system transfer function are located at. That means first we need to find the transfer function then pole locations. Now if you see this is not looking like any of the form what we discussed. Because see this, this is the only one forward path. Now this is the feedback path as well as this is also feedback path. Now, 
we have to go with the th through this feedback path so feedback path will give the only poles so the transfer function are simply h of z is equal to now there is no forward path so it will not give any zeros so but this one will give the only one the constant one by now we'll go with the feedback path so this is going this like this one feedback path so 5 by 6 into z inverse this is 5 by 6 into z inverse so feedback path means the coefficient will give the opposite sign in the transfer function this is 5 by 6 what will get minus 5 by 6 that means 1 minus 5 by 6 into z inverse now if i go through this feedback path that is z inverse into z inverse z inverse to minus 1 by 6 so we'll get plus 1 by 6 z inverse 2 so this is the transfer function we'll get now to find the poles the denominator is equal to 0 that means if i take lcm so it will become 6 z square so z inverse to means z square if it is go to denominator minus 5z plus 1 equal to 0 that means denominator now what are the roots we will get so if i multiply i should get 6 so 6z square minus 3z minus 2z plus 1 equal to 0 because minus 3 minus 2 is fine so if i take 3z common this will become 2z minus 1 again if i take minus 1 common it will become 2z minus 1 equal to 0 now what are the roots 2z minus 1 into 2z 3z minus 1 equal to 0. So what is z is equal to 1 by 2 1 pole? z is equal to 1 by 3 another pole. So what is the option? Option C is the right answer. Right? This question. So again it is came in gate 2015 for 2 marks. A realization of a stable discrete time system is shown in figure. This is the one. If x of n is equal to u of n, the system responds y of n. So we need to find the y of n. Before that, we need to find the system response or transfer function. So, y of z by x of z is equal to, which is h of z is equal to, now see, so what is this form? This is a direct form 2. Now, first we, we will take the poles, because first we will get the poles, see, feedback paths. By, see, this is going through this one, so z inverse, this is 1. So, what we will get? 1 minus z inverse this is this because this is a positive now if it's going like this this is minus we'll get plus 2 by 9 z inverse 2 that's it so the poles are over now we'll go with the zeros so there is no so on a constant term that is we'll get zero here and if we go this one minus 5 by 3 into z inverse so minus 5 by 3 into z inverse now if i go like this 5 by 3 into z inverse 2 plus 5 by 3 into z inverse 2 because there is no constant term so only you will get z inverse and z inverse 2 right so this is the h of z but we need to find the y of n so x of z is given so if i take x of n is equal to u of n so what is x of z we know that 1 by 1 minus z inverse now we can substitute here so y of z is equal to if i take 5 by 3 common and z inverse also if I take minus, what will become? So this will become 1 minus z inverse. Yes or no? If I multiply, we will get same. By, this is 1 minus z inverse plus 2 by 9 z inverse 2 into x of z. But what is x of z? 1 by 1 minus z inverse. So what is this? I can cancel these two. Right? So I will write here, y of z is equal to minus 5 by 3 z inverse by 1 minus z inverse plus 2 by 9 z inverse 2. Now, what we need to do to find the y of n, so we will have to go with the partial fraction approach. Now, to go with the partial fractions, first we need to find the roots of this equation. To find the roots of this equation, so what we will do is, so we will take LCM, so it will become 9 z square minus 9 z plus 2 by 9z square we will find the fractions for this one so what is this 9 2 sorry 18 so what is this is it will become 9z square minus 6z minus 3z plus 2 by 9z square so what it will become so if i take 3z common so it will become 3z minus 1 if i take plus 2 comma minus 2 if i take minus 2 common so it will become 3z minus 1 by 9z square so, what are the roots? 3z minus 1 into 3z minus 2 by 9z square. 
So to cancel out this 9z square, what we do is take 3z common, so it will become 1 minus 1 by 3z inverse. This is also 1 minus 2 by 3z inverse into 3z by 9z square. So 3z, 3z, 9z square common. So what are the roots of this one is minus 5 by 3z inverse by 1 minus 1 by 3 z inverse into 1 minus 2 by 3 z inverse. Now even if you multiply here, so we will get the same expression. Now to find the partial fractions, what we need to do? So y of z is equal to a by 1 minus 1 by 3 z inverse plus b by 1 minus 2 by 3 z inverse. Now how to find a value? a is equal to at z inverse is equal to 3. Yes or no? This is 3. So, minus 5 by 3 into 3 by 1 minus 2 by 3 into 3. So, this is 3, 3 cancel, 3, 3 cancel, minus 5 by minus 1. So, 5. Similarly, b. b is equal to at z inverse is equal to 3 by 2. That means, minus 5 by 3 into 3 by 2 by 1 minus 1 by 3 into 3 by 2. So, 3, 3 cancel. 3, 3 cancel. This is minus 5 by 2 by 1 minus 1 by 2. So, 1 by 2. 2, 2 cancel. This is minus 5. So, the y of z is equal to 5y 1 minus 1 by 3 z inverse minus 5 by 1 minus 2 by 3 z inverse. Now, we know that. So, whenever there are two poles, so we can have the ROCs are 1 by 3 greater than 1 by 3. Next, greater than 2 by 3 less than 2 by 3. So, combinations we, we, can, we can get three combinations. But in the question, he mentioned a stable discrete time system. So, for the stable discrete time system, ROC should include should include unit circle. Yes or no? So, what is that uh, ROC? Greater than 1 by 3. If it is mod Z is greater than 1 by 3 and mod Z is 2 by 3 means what? 0.66. So, if it is also greater than 2 by 3, so what is the common ROC will get? Mod Z is greater than 2 by 3, that means 0.6. If it is greater than 2 by 3, it will include the unit circle. So, for this, what is the common ROC we will get? So, for these conditions, we will get common ROC. So, what is the inverse Z transform of this function? 5 into, this is minus 1 by 3. So, what is this? 1 by 3 power n u of n, because mod Z is greater than 1 by 3 minus 5 into a power n that is 2 by 3 power n into u of n so this is the y of n the output response of the this system right so this is about the previous gate problems we got from this uh, what you call the block diagram representation of discrete time lti systems right